Hello students, it's Mr. Strom. This is uh, video number two for the Odmo Blocks um, assembly and uh, activity 7.4. And when I left off the last video, we were trying to get the um, this connector piece into its socket. And we were having some issues with that. So, I'm going to give you a little bit of a brief history of why this isn't working. First off, when we use the constraint command, it's great. It works for 90% of the things that we do. Um, so that's obviously how we connected everything previously when I showed you that. But if the faces are not flush, it will only allow you to mate the flush components, uh, so on and so forth. So here's an example. If we're looking at, here's our connector piece right now. So our connector piece actually has a slight taper into it so that it fits all the way into this plastic piece. And our socket, so to speak, is very flat. So it's at a 90 degree angle. If you notice, these vertical faces are parallel to each other. So those are the ones that we can constrain. But our bottom ones, we cannot mate together because of this tapered angle. So if we go back here, what I'm going to show you, I'm going to right click and free rotate. I'm going to free rotate this piece a little bit so we get it a little closer to where it's going to be end up and that'll be close enough. So go ahead and hit escape now that we're done with our free rotate. So I know it's still cattywampus that's not going to fit in. but what we need to do, if you just move your mouse over a part, in this case it's our connector, it highlights or kind of grays out a little. If you look on the left hand side, we see that it lights up the T9 connector too. And if you move your cursor over into the browser and um, scroll over connector 2, it lights it up or grays it out here in the middle. So that's what we want to see, vice versa, so we know we have the right part. We also want to find this socket. So it looks like it's T9, one block socket number one. So what we're going to do, go over to the left hand side to your browser, expand the one block socket number one, and we notice that there's this origin folder. We're going to open up that origin folder, and you notice there's YZ, X, Z, X, Y plane, so on and so forth. Well, and when you look in the normal screen, you see they light up when our cursor goes over them. Let's right click the YZ plane and click visibility and let's do the XZ and click on the visibility here in the drop down. So what this is gonna allow us to do, the planes are perfectly vertical and perfectly horizontal. So that's gonna give us something to mate to. Let's go down and find our connector two then and do the same thing. Open up the origin box, gonna right click and make visible the YZ and the XZ plane. Now we can go about just like we did with everything else so far and use the constraint tool and mate these faces. So I'm going to choose the YZ plane and I'm going to choose the YZ plane on our inside component and hit apply. And it's okay, it's not quite straight. We'll flatten it out here in a little bit. So then our next step would be to mate the horizontal planes, which in this case should be the XZ plane here and also the XZ plane inside our part. And we're going to hit apply and then go up to cancel. So if we do that, we notice, sorry, I need to reground my base here. We notice that the, oh, I'm sorry, grounded the wrong piece. Let's unground our connector and let's ground our base. There we go. That's what we wanted. Sorry, my computer crashed earlier, so um, 
That's why I had to reground this piece. Okay, so if we grab our connector, we can move it in and out, but we can't move it right to left or up and down, and that's good. That means we have it constrained so far and with those vertical and horizontal planes. Our next step we need to constrain is our depth. So we're, what we're going to go ahead and do is click the front face here on our connector piece and we're going to click the front face of our socket and click flush and you notice how it brings it in so it's flush and hit apply. I forgot to mention whenever you use constraints and you're using mate if you go back and forth between flush and mate it may flip your parts around which is okay depending on what you need to do and I'll kind of show you that in the future here but for this instance we want it to be a flush so there's no gap so we go ahead and hit apply and cancel and now we can't move our connector from our base so let's go over to the left hand side in our browser and let's right click those planes and turn off visibility so we can't see them we don't need them anymore they're just kind of obnoxious to look at if you're not using them so I'm just going to collapse those after we've um, finished placing our connector into the socket so let's go ahead and flip to the back side here if we can and I'm just going to click back and we'll have to zoom back in but this is really where we want to be Whoops. so we want to be on the back I'm going to offset it just a little bit okay I apologize I had to pause it there I got interrupted um, but I think where I left off here we're going to try and place our connector in this back piece excuse me connector and the socket so our socket's going to be a little different than what we originally saw if we go back to our um, let me open up the activity here 7.4 okay here we go so if we kind of look and use this just as reference looking at the bottom we just placed this connector on the left side if you're following my cursor into our passenger base uh, we've also added this connector into the passenger base so if you look on the other side it's reversed the cubes are facing in so therefore this um, little section is going to be the inverse of this or the peg sticking out excuse me going into this passenger base so let's handle that I'm going to zoom out a little bit and see if we can find the correct socket to go in and it looks like our sockets right down here so just like the other steps we're going to go through and use regular constraints to make this happen I'm going to go ahead and click our front face here scroll up front face here see how it's backwards right now so this is where you'd select flush and see how it flips right side up so the difference between just mate and flush in this case will flip it back and forth and we want to keep it on flush so we'll hit apply our next step we're gonna zoom in here we're gonna click this top face and the inverse side on our passenger base click up here so you notice how it actually flipped it 180 degrees so it was oriented one way and that's with the flush command so we're gonna use the mate command this time so see how it transfers it back and forth P figure out which one you need in this case we just want the mate hit apply we're gonna zoom in hit our side and the inverse of that on our passenger base hit apply those clicks are handy so you know when things are working correctly and if we go ahead and hit cancel and try and move it it's not going to move it any so our next step we need to grab our other connector I'm going to bring it up here for simplicity's sake so we're closer and don't have to move all over the place I want to free rotate this 
And actually, to make this work, we need our little pegs, these little slots, to go down. Because if you see here, the little part for those pegs will be down. So I'm just going to right click, free rotate, and see if we can get it where we need to get it. And actually, it looks like there's pegs on both sides, so it doesn't really matter, I suppose. That's close enough. Okay. So I'm going to hit escape on my keypad and get out of there. So now we have to do the same thing we did before. We need to go in and select the planes for this. So if I just move my cursor over, it says it's connector one. I'm going to expand, expand origin, right click, YZ, right click, XZ, visibility on. We're going to find this is two block socket one. I'm going to go down and expand that. Expand the origin. Right click YZ. Right click XZ. Turn our visibilities on. So we're looking good so far. Now we can go up to constraint at the top. I'm going to start with the YZ on both sections. I can grab it here. There we go. So we have our YZ selected and mate right now. Now if we choose flush, you see how it, it kind of righted it up? It doesn't really matter right now. You can do either. Let's go ahead and do flush for now just for kicks and hit apply. Now I'm going to select the XZ and the XZ. You notice we heard the click. So if you do mate and flush, you see how it changes it in and out this time? Well, we need to have the square pegs going in and this oval part sitting out. So I think I'm going to keep it on mate, hit apply. Now hit cancel and let's pull it out and see where we're at. So yep, I'm glad I stuck with the mate because our big rectangles facing out, our inverse squares are facing in. So now to complete this, I'm going to select constrain our front face of our socket and I'm going to click this ridge on our connector and in this case we're just on mate, let's see how that lines up, it doesn't look bad, let's see what flush does. So flush and mate doesn't move it. Either one will work in this case. Oop. Uh, let's exit out of there and see what's going on. Ah, let's try this different. Let's try and grab this face here on the very front of our our squares and let's grab the very bottom or inside of our hole and there you go if we hit mate there that should work hopefully hit apply yep there we go so you can hit cancel or the X now if we try and move this piece it is entwined entwined as one now with the passenger base so I am going to go ahead and take off the planes I'm just going to take the planes off on the inside socket and leave the planes on just in case we need them for the um, connector. So if we're thinking about this a couple different ways, what I would do is I would bring the appropriate socket up and place a socket onto this component and go from there. So that should be relatively easy. I'm just going to hit constrain. Should be able to just generally constrain these together because they're flat. So I'm going to hit apply. Hit cancel so I can move it a little bit, see what I'm working with. So I'm going to drag it out. Hit constrain. Go for this top face. 
actually. Let's go constrain. Let's go this tap face and the inner tap face of our connector. That may not work. Let's see what happens. Nope, not gonna work. Let's hit cancel. Let's see what we can work with here. This face may be tapered as well. Uh, actually it is though because we we had to use it on the other side so what I'm gonna do I notice if I look at my browser this is socket number two so I'm gonna hit the plus hit the plus next to origin can you visibly add both the uh, YZ and XZ planes to our socket there you go now let's try and constrain those planes together again Yep, that was our issue. So, apply. And now we can do the horizontal planes. If it'll let me grab it here. There we go. So go ahead and do the horizontal planes. Hit cancel. Let's see where we're at. We can't move. We're good to go. So now you can go ahead and, and take off the visibility of both or all those pieces because we know our sockets are square it was just our connectors that we were having issues with being square so I'm gonna turn off the visibility on all these and you can go on to the next step so over here you're gonna have to turn the the planes back on we should have left them on until we finish the other part but you kind of see the pattern we're going through here. So if things aren't connecting or uh, if they aren't mating the way they need to, maybe you need to mate them using those planes. It's the same type of situation with any piece, no matter if it's these connectors or not. If you open up the planes, you should be able to mate no problem from plane to plane. So in this case, I might as well just add our rear part on quick and that'll probably be the end of this video. So you can keep going and see how things need to be. If you run into problems, email me, ask me, um, do what you need to do. I'm going to go ahead and hit constraint. I'm going to move my box so it's out of the way. I'm going to click this back face of our trunk component or bed and click the outside face here if we hit flush you see how it flips it in and out so let's keep it as mate and hit apply hit cancel so I can move it a little bit and get to other faces so now I'm gonna hit constrain let's go on this top face of our connector and we obviously need to do the inverse side of our base so we heard the click and before I hit apply let's kind of look at what we're working with so for the most part it looks like it fits good I'm gonna hit apply next I'm gonna go through and click the outside of our passenger base and the outside of our trunk or bed hit flush and let's see where we're at looks like things aren't lining up a hundred percent yet but let's do flush apply let's see where our issue lies here so it looks like we need to flush our top pieces now. Our side pieces are good, but it's our, our top pieces. So I'm going to click the top face of our trunk, the top face of our base, and it's not going to let us do that. So let's see what we're running into for issues here. Many of you may have the same problem. And I don't think these are tapered. So I'm not sure where our issue lies, but let's see if we can problem solve it quick. I'm going to find the bed, expand, 
and expand the origin let's do let's show the visibility of the XY plane on the bed and let's open up the passenger base and go to origin and let's pull out the X, Y plane as well. Turn on visibility. Let's see if we can constrain these together. It's not going to let us. So, being the problem solving people we are, let's go ahead and close this. Let's go down to the bed and let's delete these mates quick let's kind of start from scratch so to speak so right now we have nothing constraining these two excuse me together let's try and constrain just our planes vertically grab these two planes and let's mess with flush and mate let's do flush so our rear is hanging out hit apply and cancel so it doesn't look like much is grounded but there is a constraint holding these two together the two planes now from there let's see what we can do So if it were me, I'm going to hit constrain this face to the opposing face here. And if we hit flush, it flips it. Let's just do mate and apply. Now, if I hit cancel, we can't move up and down or in and out, but we still move left and right. Let's constrain this side with this side and make it flush. And that's going to work, so we're going to hit apply and cancel, and there you go. We're good to go. So, you just have to play around with it a little bit and figure out which way it works for you. There is kind of a certain order when you constrain things. Um, and you have to realize which faces you've constrained and which ones you haven't, so you do it correctly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take... Whoops. Sorry, X out of that. Hit escape, hopefully, there we go. I'm gonna save again. Make sure you save often. If it comes up with this um, file, just say yes to all and then hit okay, and you might have to hit okay again another time, but um, we should be fine as far as that goes. Okay, so we see that we have everything we need to here. I'm going to show you one axle quick. I know we're, we're over 20 minutes for this video, but I want to show you the way the axles need to go in and kind of a tool you can use, a constrained tool you can use for those. So let's go ahead and grab one of these axles and just move it a little closer so we're in the same frame. Okay, you notice there's two sides to the axle. One has a slit and the other one doesn't. The side with the slit actually goes into the wheel hub and the side without the slit will go into your bed or your front piece or whatever you're looking at. So let's go ahead and go up to constrain. Now if we select this third option, our tangent option may work, otherwise our insert option, now let's try your insert, looks like a good option. So we're going to click our fourth option on type, which is insert. We're going to click see how there's a center point we're gonna grab the center point of our peg or axle and we're gonna grab the center point of our little slot where our axle needs to go now notice it disappears what happens when we hit aligned see if we hit aligned between opposed the line kind of brings it out where it needs to be so let's keep it on aligned and hit apply I'm going to hit cancel or exit out. So now we can rotate 
see how it rotates we can rotate our axle which is fine I don't think we're gonna change that for anything you can rotate your axle but it is flush to your base so that's that's key I don't mind that it rotates as long as it doesn't move in or out or right or left or up or down anything like that we're fine so you can just go through hopefully this video is enough to give you a taste of all the possible scenarios you're gonna run into if not make sure you email me make sure you talk to me in class and enjoy hopefully this helps you out a little bit